What's up, everybody? This is Ed from my Bring Back, and I've come to the realization that I have put the cart before the horse. We have gone off on these videos into some strange places, spending some time with GG Plot, making exotic visualizations like tree maps, and I really and truly have not adequately given information about the basic plotting elements in R. So before we go further afield into some of the more Eh, different or unique things R can do, we might as well spend a little bit of time getting ourselves very comfortable with the syntax, functionality, and capabilities of base R plotting. So, let's take a look. Okay, I know I've showed you some basic scatter plotting before. Let's just spend a little bit of time refreshing ourselves today on that subject so it becomes simple. Make some fake data here. We'll give x, let's say, negative 15 to 15. And with that syntax, you can just generate a range of integers. You can see them there. And we'll say y can be x cubed. So let's take a look at y. Now, the syntax for basic plotting is pretty simple. Plot x y, right? So your x values and your y values. You can use different names, but from the geometry classes we've all taken and whatever other math you had in high school, that should be pretty familiar, at least to English speakers. So if we plot x, y, we get a new window to open up. This is what we call the null device, and this is where R does its plotting. So it gives us some things. You'll see that it very nicely labels our axes for us. It additionally gives us units, tick marks along the side, which is very helpful because if you consider this thing will actually redraw if we resize it. So here I've resized the window and you might think that the shape changed, but you can check and you can see that no, the scale is the same, the numbers are in place. So this is very nice, this is very simple, uh, this is very easy to accomplish, but there are probably some things that we'd want to do if we were going to put this in front of somebody and one is to give it a title. So the way we do that in the syntax is to use the main parameter of that plot function. So we'll say main equals, uh, we'll say test plot. And then if we run this, swap back over to our graphics device, there we have right at the top, bold and bigger than the other text, test plot. So another thing that we probably ought to do if we're going to put this in front of folks is give our axes more descriptive labels, x and y don't really tell me much of anything. So let's try something else. And we do that with the x lab and ylab arguments you can pass to the plot function. So I'll say xlab equals my bring back videos watch. And we'll say ylab equals how rad you are. Now if we run that, take a look at our device, look at that. Just that simple. Now we have uh, Clear label, so you can clearly clearly see that the more my bring back videos you watch, the more rad you become. Okay, so that is a super basic look at just taking so you know some x and y values, plotting them together, and slapping labels on it. That's easy to do in R. It's quick. It's one of the things R is great for. And I want to take some time to explain where we're going to go in the next few videos to give you an idea of why we're doing what we're doing. I am well aware that there exist other and also truthfully richer interfaces within R for making visualizations and graphics uh, that extend and improve on the base graphics. But we're going to spend some time on the base graphics for a few reasons. Uh, first and foremost is learning this syntax. This syntax is borrowed, used, and employed by a variety of packages you can get for R uh, that accomplish more particular types of visualizations and other things. So knowing the base plot syntax is going to be very important. The other thing that will help you do over time is we'll show you how the plot command responds to various types of input. So when you just give it, you know, vectors of numerical data, it says, okay, you want a scatter plot, which is what it gave us today. Pretty simple stuff. But it responds differently to other things and showing you how those are visualized and what you can do with those visualizations will also help you understand RS data types. So that's a little preview and a little explanation for what's up for what we're up to. But again, my name is Ed, working here for my bring back. Appreciate you taking the time to watch the videos with us today. Keep coming back, keep pushing play, keep subscribing, keep showing this to other folks. And I promise we'll keep you learning.